What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with some more Don Machi. Today we're doing Season 4, Episodes 16 and 17. Very excited and very nervous to continue off where we left off. Remember, guys, if you guys want the full, uncut, unedited versions, check out that link to the Patreon down below, like always. Make sure you guys leave a like on this video and let me know your thoughts down below in that comment section. Other than that, let's not waste any more time. Hop right into today's episodes. Let's do it. All right, here we go. We're going to have a group discussion about justice. Okay, now we're getting real philosophically deep. A weapon used to justify a cause. You're not lying at all. I mean, understandable. They would always have their arguments, always have their comical banter, but they loved each other. I swear, these flashbacks make it hurt even more. Everything Ryu's going through, you know? Because now I know that the Astria family, like, are good people. Alright, this is episode 16. This one's called Wealth Crozo. We're both up. We both had a little bit of a rest. Let's see what we can do. Okay. So we're off the main path as well. So even if they make it down here to 37, there's no way they would find us here. So we are officially on our own. Also, valid point. If they make it out of this, oh my god, I'm gonna be so happy the amount of reunion and just happiness we're gonna have. Now we have Welf about to do his mission where you have every video game where it's like, protect him. He's opening the secret portal. He's forging the ancient magic swords. Protect him. Don't let me you know. We've all had this in a video game. I love it. Use the last of his magic sword right there. He's got the adamantite. All right. Apprentice to Hephaestus. Here we go. Hell yeah. And they're always on each other's asses too. Luka and Wolf, so. I respect it. I respect it. Where do you think he gets it from? Come on. Alright. The waves are starting. We got our front line. I love that slash he does. So amazing. I do like the area we're in, though. We can funnel them down this tunnel as much as we can, you know? Especially with the two shields in the front. Hmm. I mean, it technically is a deep floor ore. It would make sense that it's not as, that it is its first time shaping or working with the ore, you know? But Adamantite's crazy. I mean, I would feel bad a little bit, but if I was an adventurer and I died, I would want my belongings to be taken from someone else that they can hopefully survive from, you know? It's technically desecrating, but that's the most, eth that's the most efficient and somewhat ethical way of looking about it, you know? You thoroughly have to do what you have to do. I'm so with Ryu on this one. I w we have to leave somewhat our moral compass at the at the door when we're dealing with situations like this, you know? Come on, you know this is hard for her, just as it is for you. Glad he isn't fighting, he's not being stubborn about this. He realizes how hard it is and he's gonna do it. <laughs> That's a little desperate. You could've, you could've maybe did it in a way where his head doesn't fall off, but he, you're trying your best. I'm not gonna blame you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let me know if I sound like I'm crazy or if I'm completely in the wrong, but if you guys were adventurers and you guys died, would you not want someone, especially someone as good-hearted as Bell Cornell, to continue and live on with, you know, I would totally want that. Is it a map? Wow, look how somewhat barren it is. Hmm. 
Yeah, they were probably hitting all these dead ends themselves, scoping it out, going, continuing. Just look at all those X's from dead end. All of Orario? That's what I'm saying. If we can get back to the main route, Ryu can hopefully take it from there, but our only struggle is getting there. I do feel bad for them. They were stuck in a horrible situation on the deep floors. If we are able to make it out, we will lift you guys. R.I.P. You gotta. Yeah, you gotta start getting at the shape, well. This is quite the shot. We've never had a shot like this before. Mm. He's doubting himself. Wow, has this never been done? Crafting, especially with adamantite level ore? You might have. Ooh, with Hephaestus popping up behind you. Is your fire burning bright? Are you resolute in your resolve? Is this an old wealth? Metal's voice. Let its sound ring in your ears. Kind of like Zoro listening to the, the hell with the Crozo family. He needs the self-reflection. Yeah. Get to the root of things. Why are you doing what you're doing? Once you find that out... For your friends. Once your motivation becomes un... For yourself and becomes solely for others, you'll... Experience new strength that's unfounded before, you know? This when he first left. The Hephaestus family... Familia. It's for my friends. <laughs> so I'm saying, what's your strength for someone else? You <laughs> and the music swelling up right there, you know? Come on, Wolf, grip that hammer. Come on. Ooh. <laughs> he's hitting those with confidence now. <laughs> oh, he's shaping that adamantite. His fire is burning bright. <laughs> Yeah. That beats all blades? Is that even possible? Shout out Subaki. Can we, uh. Can we skip rent just this one month? Come on. Gotta stay true to your word. Divine power. Okay, like the one Hephaestus made. This man's, I was about to say, you could see this man pouring his actual blood in this blade. I fuck with it, well, I fucks with it. Here I come. Shield starting to break. Front line is gone. Now would be the time for a divine indestructible magic sword to just clear that path. Ah! <laughs> That's perfect timing. <laughs> Could have timed to better myself. Band oh my god, that looks like a fucking sword of like fate in zero or something. My magic enough. <laughs> My magic won't be enough alone. Can you lend me a hand? As Shiko Kazuki with the wealth and Cassandra team up. Oh my god. I love how it wasn't just a straight flame. We stuck it in the ground and it like exploded out of the ground. That is so gangster. <laughs> like a vortex of flames. Now, I don't know if he was capping when he said indestructible. This is an adamantite level weapon. But if we even get 10 more uses out of this, that's a strong ass weapon. Shatterproof? 
bro with the music. The great day stars golden rays. Oh my lord, I just got goosebumps. Imagine like three seasons from now where wealth could be as a blacksmith. Now I'm giving him back at the bar. <laughs> Imagine Ryu and Bell on the brink of death, and all you see is their, their party come down with a fucking god sword. You're like, what the hell? Right, on to the next episode. Dang, so Kaguya's on that level. That's crazy. Damn. There's always this in any anime where you have your idealist, people who want the world that they ideally want to have, and the people who are the realists who say, fucking grow up, wake up, look at the world you live in. There's a balance between the both that people should have. These are just both extremes right here. All right, White Labyrinth. Whoa, these are not the undead sheep. What are these, like lichen fucking throws? Werewolves? What the hell? Oh, these are like werewolf warriors. Nice, use one of the extra weapons we have. One of the tools we got from them. Like an explosive stone. Yeah, that came in handy, all right. Yeah, there we go. Speak of the devil. Don't let your guard down. All right, well. This unshatterable magic sword. It's literally like when you pre-order the game and just get an OP weapon off start, clears the first level, couple of dungeons for you, you know what I'm saying? What do we mean? Attack on Titan? Shiganshina? Divided into five different areas? Ooh. Ooh. He's gonna be fucking that bubble guts later. Good. <laughs> it might have been moldy, but at least it worked. Got our, oh. Are these more werewolf men? Fucking hell, man. Ooh, Subaki? And the rest of the, I forget the name of the bar, but the rest of the barmaid? Going ham. What is she, a monk in D&D? She got the fucking fisticuffs? Are they gonna run into the juggernaut? Last time we saw it, it was below you guys, but who knows where it's at now. Bro, I still want to see Otaro. I want to see Otaro versus the Juggernaut so bad. Yeah, and this is where the Juggernaut went crazy. Oh my god. Alright. Okay. Is that Marie? I can't think of many girls with high pitched voices like that. Lily Ruka, Marie Hestia. And it, she's looking at the water. I'm thinking, Marie, listen to the warning, Aisha. She's trying to tell you. I mean, obviously, they're not going to listen to the warning. Go that way. We want them to go that way, but like. Yeah, nah, fuck a Paluta. 
Notice something? Detect? Presence ahead of us? Oh no, what the fuck is that? An ooze. I've run into these in every game. Yep. They vary? Bro, this is literally like DD. Like, oozes can be fucking. Uh, I've ran into poison oozes that are green, uh, acidic oozes that'll uh, take your weapon or your shield away that's yellow. You know, I fucking love. I love all the references, like Kelpie last night, all that shit, you know? Yeah, I wonder where the bodies did go. I wonder if that has something. Yeah, it melted. I wonder if that has anything with Marie. Okay, so we're at one of the ring walls, the third one. Anytime you get a silver lining or anytime you get hope, light at the end of the tunnel, something bad's gonna happen though. It always does in the show. It was the Lampton. Yeah, 10 floors down. Ultimaria. We wonder what happened to the bodies. Yeah. Shout out Aisha. Talk about insane durability. Nice teamwork. Oh. Tsubaki and the, and the squad are at 27-2. They can help us out. But they're like, they're not attacking us. So they must be slightly down the hall a little bit. Nice. Ooh. Good kick. Honey. Of some good sensory work. Now, Subaki's definitely gonna recognize, well, and at least the rest of the Hephaestus family, or the uh, Hestia family. Come on. Every time you kill a wave of them, another wave just comes out of the water. It's like, what do you do? Right? You only have a certain amount of. All right, yeah, get Tsubaki and the gang in here. There's nothing like, what? What is this bullshit? Oh. Is that Marie? Oh, bro, them doing a twist like that. That was good. Are these the rest of the monsters? I'm trying to remember the actual. What is the name they turn we use for him? Why am I blanking on this? The Xanos. Oh my God! Shout out, Hugh. That was such a good misplay. That was such a good little twist right there. My surface dwelling friends. Shout out. After everything Bells did, this feels so good. Bells was so out of his way. Ooh, that was. And I got goosebumps. She's fully prepared for the worst, where she needs to kill, give up her life to save Bells. I'm praying it does. There's no way we lose Ryu after this. No way. <laughs> I love how we're getting the flashbacks of her as she's thinking about her old self and relates that to Bell and his innocence, his hope, you know, stuff like that. Ooh, as this comes to a head that Kaguya was talking about, is this the time? Oh. <laughs> bro, it's coming full circle, bro. This, 
show so damn good. That was the end? Well, those were some fantastic episodes. Uh, huge shout out to Ryu and her words of wisdom, her keeping Bell level-headed, calm, still pushing forward, still hopeful. Like, honestly, it's such a symbiotic relationship between them right now. Sorry, something happened to my phone. Whereas, like, Bell would not be alive right now if it weren't for Ryu. And Ryu absolutely would not be alive if it weren't for Bell. And so they are so in sync and so on the same page and perfect for each other right now that I would absolutely be heartbroken if Ryu dies or if she does need to make that sacrifice, that choice that Kaguya was saying. I do really enjoy that storytelling beat, though, how it comes full circle of Ryu being like Bell back in the day, dealing with this ultimate choice, dealing with her family being lost, turning into a much more stoic and cold person. And then now it all comes full circle to where she's at right now, seeing Belle and was like, was I like that back in the day? Kayana, it's just it's really good writing, really well done. I really want, so oh, I was going to say, I really want Subaki and the rest of the gang to save us, but man, we got the Zenos here. I still, I need to go back and see that more. I'm so happy they showed up at the end there. That made me so happy. It's not even funny. All in all though, it is like slow, but steady. We are making progress baby steps we're getting there bell and ryu fingers crossed can make it out of there and wealth with his fucking amazing smithing powers making that awesome fucking indestructible sword so badass so badass hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did please leave a like let me know your thoughts down below don't forget to subscribe click that bell you guys know the jazz uh check out that patreon i think i already said that uh drink some water tell someone you love them have a great day after squad peace out